When these teams met at one kid eight, it was a fixture dominated by Ravindra Jadeja. How much of a say is he going to have at Chepok as Chennai hosts Mumbai with both teams locked on 10 points? Sean Tate and Amol Muzumdar to look ahead to that encounter. Uh, in general, Amol, you view Ravindra Jadeja's season. It is such a drastic change from a lot of struggles he had with the ball in particular in 2022. Uh, what do you say, uh, see as the reasons behind this resurgence? Well, firstly, I would say that uh, between the two seasons, 22 and 23, he had an injury and he, he had a big layoff. Coming back, uh, you know, after an injury, it, uh, just an um, incredible season that he, he's having. And he's having a, a, a massive impact on what, how Chennai Super Kings are faring, in, especially in the middle overs. I personally feel he has done a little bit of a tweak uh, as far as bowling is concerned. He has gone uh, very deliberately, he has gone a little quicker in the air. If you see his speeds, um, compared to last season, I think maybe two or three kilometers on a higher side. Uh, so that is not giving the batsman that much uh, time to react to it. And um, they are falling prey to it. Uh, whether it is right-handers or left-handers, he's bowling magnificently in the middle overs. Yeah, and the left-handers presents a very interesting uh, side of Jadeja's performance because he is defying conventional wisdom. You think a lot of times you will shield your left arm, slow left armor in front of the left-hander, but he's having his best season. I think six of his 14 wickets have been left-handers. Mm. And that becomes so much more important against a Mumbai Indian side which has Ishan Kishan now in form, Tilak Varma, so it's filled with left-handers mm. there. I think, and I think the captaincy helps as well because Dhoni doesn't buy into too much of that stuff. Um, just, you know, good players bowling to, to good batsmen either way. And I, I, I like that approach. I think it's fantastic. And today he's got enough experience. He's played enough of top-level cricket to, um, to certainly be able to bowl to anybody, whether it be left or right, um, you know. And Amol's right, it looks, it looks like he has tweaked his game a little bit. Sometimes a layoff is good for the mind as well. And it, gives you, it does give you a chance when you're coming back from an injury to, to maybe work on a few things and take his game to another level. This Mumbai batting lineup has found all its gears, Amol, in the last few matches. Chase down 200 in back-to-back -back chases. Uh, and Chennai in general uh, will fear that. So how, how do you see that matchup playing? What plans do Chennai need to have to try and limit this Mumbai batting might? Well, they're, they're going great guns at the moment. They're the only guy who's not firing is Rohit Sharma. <laughs> imagine if he if fires. He firing, huh? yeah. If he starts firing, imagine, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> they've got a gun batting lineup. Uh, the only thing what I feel is Cameron Green, uh, Tim David, they were all coming. I mean, they, they came in, in, in the IPL with a big reputation, a big pay scale as well. But they're living up to their reputation now. You know, they've started to find their gear, started to find their bearings in the IPL, how they need to approach things and how they need to finish uh, things as well. I mean, somebody who's really impressed me in this IPL is Tilak Varma. Mm. Right from the word go, um, if you recollect the game against RCB, the first scoring shot was a six over long on against Mohammad Siraz. And he just announced himself in this year's IPL. He's been the standout performer. And if you see the last couple of games where he has played the role of a finisher there, he's played it to perfection. Even the last game was in balance against Rajasthan Royals and he came and changed the course of the game within a space of one over. A contest at Chepok, at least old Chepok, typically you would have been thinking that, okay, this is where bowlers will feel some sense of respite. Uh, but 200 has been quite easy to breach even at this ground. The last game saw Punjab chase down mm. a 200 plus target. Uh, in that sense, do you reckon for the likes of Tushar Deshpande and Matisha Patirana, this will be the sternest examination against that red hot Mumbai batting lineup? Uh, possibly, yeah. Um, absolutely. I think, I mean, at least they're at home. Um, they've been bowling in those conditions, so it's, that, that's going to be no surprise. But they're going to be against um, probably the informed batting lineup now, all of a sudden. In the competition, but that's what you want. I think um, Deshpande and these guys—that's that's exactly what they they'll be looking for. That's what they need, and to, to test themselves against these guys. So, uh, a great contest. I don't think Chennai should take a backward step anywhere. I think throw everything you've got at Mumbai's batting, um, full on. Yeah, you know, and I think that's what they'll do. They, they're not—they're not, they're not a team to change too many things because of the opposition. Um, they tend to just go with what they do best. Yeah. Interest me in a prediction. 
Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, first game was won by uh, Chennai Super Kings. Yeah. Chennai Super Kings at the Chepok. I think I'll go with the Yellow Army. Yeah, I'm yellow. the same. I, I think they're at, at, at that ground, yeah. Yellow's the colour then from our panel, but if Mumbai win, they will go ahead of Chennai, which a few weeks back would have seemed unthinkable this season.